What's up, YouTube? I'm Jackie Franchilli for Wahoo's 24-7. And we've got a new exciting episode of the good old podcast on this Tuesday. We have a special guest, Virginia guard Tane Murray, joins us on the show this week. And plus, on the football front, we break down a few new quarterback targets as Virginia expands their 2023 board. But before we get started, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell so that you're notified whenever a new video is uploaded. So with that, let's get going. Happy Tuesday, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Good Old Podcast. I'm Jack Fernchuli for Wahoo's 24-7, and we have a jam-packed show today. We're talking a little bit about everything. We start off with football, and we also have a basketball visitor on our podcast this week. We welcome in Virginia guard Tane Murray to the show. But first, let's talk some football because there's a lot that's going on on grounds. They've hosted a couple of official visitors last weekend. They're currently hosting a few visitors right now on grounds. I'm taping the show on June 14th when visitors are still on their visits. They're expected to leave on the 15th, and then they'll set to host more visitors over the weekend, they're also set to host an unofficial visitor starting on Tuesday and then heading into Wednesday. And that's a big time an unofficial visitor. And we'll get to that in just a second. So a lot to get through, especially because UVA has had a few camps the last week with several underclassmen coming in and several guys that you need to know for the 24 class and the 25 class. So let's start with the official visitors and that big visitor that I sneaked in there um, just a second ago. So as if you're a Wahoo's 24 seven subscriber, you already know who is expected on grounds and who is on grounds and who shifted their schedules. So we may be expecting some news this week. I may be putting a crystal ball in the next 24 to 48 hours. Armel Mukum is one guy that's on campus. That's something that we've reported on and it's a uh, pretty public knowledge. He's the Wood for Woodbury forest edge. I believe Virginia is sitting well with him. Uh, he's not the only visitor in town. London Humphreys is the other visitor. He is a wide receiver uh, who picked up an offer in the spring. He is somewhat of a Vandy lean just because of his connections to the program. His dad is an associated head coach to that track program. Um, and then Amari Thomas. He's an intriguing prospect out of Alabama. He picked up an offer at the end of May. He also is on grounds for his official visit. And then Virginia will be hosting more official visitors on the weekend, including one prospect who was slated to come this week in this beginning of the week, but decided to come over the weekend. Virginia is also waiting for the decision of defensive lineman Samaj Turner, who visited Duke over the weekend. Um, obviously, if you're a subscriber to Wahoo's 24-7, you know that we've been feeling pretty confident with Samaj as his recruitment continued. I think Duke is a big player in his recruitment. I give the slight edge to Virginia as of right now. Again, there's a lot of time between now and when he makes a decision, possibly in the next week. I think it's neck and neck between the two programs. So stay Wahoo's 24-7 as we keep you guys in the loop as this develops. Because, again, this is going to be a close one between both programs. I think both programs did a stupendous job hosting Samaj and his family. The two schools are pretty similar and how they value academics and that balance between academics and footballs. They both preach that it's not a four-year decision. It's a 40-year decision, which really resonated with Samaj. So it's really going to be interesting to see which way this goes. My head is telling me that UVA was the leader heading into Duke, and they could still be somewhat of just have the slight edge over the Blue Devils leaving that Duke visit. But again, it's going to be an interesting couple of days there for him. Now, I also teased a big unofficial visitor. So Virginia had to re, I don't want to say redo, but they had to have a slight little makeover to their quarterbacks board. If you are a listener to the show, we broke down the quarterbacks board probably about a month ago when we mentioned guys like Avery Johnson and Brock Glenn. Brock Glenn was supposed to be on grounds actually the last few days, but Ohio State came in and he canceled his official visit to Virginia and he's slated to be at Ohio State this upcoming weekend. So Virginia quickly pivoted and they've been evaluating other guys. They weren't sitting and waiting for every Johnson and Brock Glenn to decide. They were 
actively evaluating other quarterback prospects, several of which have actually been on grounds for their camps, the camps that I mentioned earlier. Um, one of those guys was a, a quarterback named Caleb McMickle. We'll be having a update on him on Wahoo's 24-7 um, by Wednesday. And he is a signal caller out of Georgia who currently has offers from Houston, Mercer, William Mary, and Samford. And Virginia is evaluating him. He did well during the camp. Uh, Virginia was definitely is in, definitely interested. Um, they're just still currently evaluating him as a prospect. Um, he certainly loves Virginia, and it will be interesting to see how that UVA offer, if they offer, how much that will affect um, Caleb's decisions moving forward. Uh, he's obviously very interested in the school, and again, we're having a full update on him on Wahoo's 24-7. And then another name uh, that should be on your radar for UVA on that quarterback board is Jacob Hoschlag. He also was on grounds for a camp. He was in Charlottesville on Saturday where he participated in the camp and also took a tour around grounds. Actually, he's very familiar with Virginia since his sister is studying at UVA. He's from Milton, Massachusetts. He's in Milton Academy. Um, he is very familiar with the grounds. He's actually visited in March too for spring. Then the coaches invited him back on camp. Um, they like what they saw on Saturday. Uh, but again, they're still evaluating him. He's got offers from, you know, guys like Georgetown and Columbia. So again, a high academic kid, kids that UVA, you know, should recruit because they have a high academic standard and they're good athletes. So that is someone to monitor, but a guy who you should really keep an eye on for the next 48 hours. I guess I, I saved the one that you should really note for last is Anthony Colandrea. He picked up an offer from UVA on Monday night. And he picked up the offer before his visit. He is slated to be on grounds. Actually, this is currently 5.58 p.m. is when I am taping this. He's already should be in Charlottesville. He's meant to be in Charlottesville for two days, Tuesday and Wednesday. Wednesday will be where his bulk of his unofficial visit is. He's a Middle Tennessee, uh, Middle Tennessee State commit. He committed uh, during April, one of his visits. And he's from St. Petersburg, Florida. And he's really come on, to, on the scene this spring. A lot of schools have seen his potential during his jamboree and his high school. And let me, I'm just going to pull up his stats because it's quite remarkable um, what he's been able to accomplish. He's kind of turned a few heads. So as a junior, he hit just under 63% of his passes, throwing for 3,252 yards with 27 touchdowns. Um, with just 10 interceptions, and he rushed for 362 yards and five scores. When I was speaking to our guys down in Florida, Andrew Ivins, he he tried to compare his game to someone that's very familiar, Johnny Manziel. He said, no joke, he has that Manziel-like qualities where he can, he can get you the yardage. He will make plays either of his arms and of his legs. And Virginia offered him um, they've been evaluating him for a while, and they went to Florida and evaluated him as well. So they're definitely high on him. They wanted to offer him before he visited. Coach Lamb offered him, uh, and I talked to Anthony. There's a full story on Wahoo's 24-7. So I spoke to Anthony. He has yet to speak to Tony Elliott. He's hoping to get to know the staff and Tony Elliott while he gets on grounds. And he is currently scheduled to take an official visit to Middle, C Middle Tennessee State over the next weekend, but he is not shied away by saying that he is thinking of taking an official visit to Virginia in the future as well. So this is a recruitment to keep an eye on for Virginia fans. I think right now these are three names um, that UVA is, is either interested by offering or still evaluating to see what steps they want to move forward. But this 2023 board is still going to be developed. It's still going to be going to change a couple of things especially in the next few weeks after the camp they've seen a lot of guys on camp um to evaluate and then possibly offer they offered up quite a few guys actually during camp season um when mo one notable is actually another quarterback christian martin from highland springs he was at tony Elliott's first camp um i believe it was like june 7th or june 8th and he did very well i think a lot of people were impressed by him obviously um, Virginia would love to keep that connection to Highland Springs after Miles Green committed just a week ago. And, you know, they quickly offered him. He had a great performance out on the field in front of the staff. And then a few days later was back on grounds to take an unofficial visit. And his mom and him were very impressed. And then boom, 
UVA offered. And I think Virginia will be a good, big player in his recruitment down the line. Another guy that received an offer from UVA is Brett Cl Clatterball. Um, he is a, a name to know in the 2025 class. I know that seems far away. Well, if a guy as, as highly, what he's going to be highly rated, he's not currently highly rated because he's 2025, but he is going to be highly rated. So you need to get in on early. He was very impressive during camp. I think every single staff member was watching when they played, uh, their last games before ending the camp. And he was offered uh, about 24 hours ago by Virginia. He's been camping at several schools. He picked up a Virginia Tech offer after he camped them. They were actually their, his first Power 5 offer. Um, he also picked up a offer from Penn State after camping there. And he also picked up an offer from West Virginia after camping there. So this is a kid that is going to have a lot of interest. What does UVA have? They're the hometown school. I didn't mention where Brett's from. He's from Eastern View High School in Culpeper. When I asked him about how big a Virginia offer would mean to him, he said that Virginia Tech and ODU were good in-state offers, but Virginia was a hometown team. His mom and dad can visit him whenever they want to. They can go to games. Um, it's only, you know, what, 40 minutes away. So that offer means a lot to him. And even before they offered, he's been a constant visitor on grounds. He was at Virginia for at least one game in the fall. I believe it's for the William and Mary game under the new under the former staff. He also visited in the spring, I believe. If I remember correctly, it's for one practice. I definitely he was definitely at the spring game, but I believe it was also for a practice as well. So this is a kid who really loves UVA, really understand what it is to be a UVA fan or to understand the program. Um, so getting in early is big. It's not going to be easy, though, because once other guys start coming in, obviously, it's never easy. But getting in early is crucial. You have time to cement that relationship. They've already started. He really likes his connection with Clint Sintum. And as you all know, it's good to get in early with these type of kids, especially, especially in-state kids and especially kids that are only 40 minutes from campus and grounds. So, um, so yeah, so th those are the big storylines from football moving forward. I expect some decisions to be made in the next few days, possibly in next week. It'll be an interesting and exciting time for this staff. Um, I could expect to put in a couple of crystal balls in UVA's favor. Um, one of them is not quite an in-state player, but technically you can kind of sneak in in-state players. So think of this. Who is an in-state player but really is out of state? Which school would I be talking to? I'll leave you that. So I'll leave you with that little tease while we take a quick break, because after the break, we welcome Tane Murray to the show. So from New Zealand, he talks a little bit about the upcoming season with the Virginia Cavaliers, but also what he's been up to and how excited he is to go to Italy and maybe speak a little of the town. So we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Good Old Podcast. I'm Jackie Ferranciulli for Wahoo's 24-7. And I'm really excited for our guest this week. Tane Murray is coming on to the show all the way from New Zealand. So here we go. Hey, Tane, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And you're joining us from New Zealand. So how is it being home? Yeah, it's been great to be home. Um, obviously, I haven't seen my family in a while. Um, so now it's been awesome to see my family and catch up with friends and um, be able to, yeah, just experience life back at home. What is the biggest thing? Obviously, uh, you miss your family, but what is the biggest thing that you miss from being so far away from New Zealand? Yeah, um, I'd say there's a lot of things. Just obviously, when you grow up in a place, um, there's so many things that I guess you think are normal. And then when you leave, um, you realize that it's not something that's all around the world. I'd say for me, it's just being the scenery. Um, yeah, the beaches and uh, the amazing kind of outside life that we have in New Zealand. What is the first thing you do when you step off the plane when you get to New Zealand? What is the first place you want to go to? Yeah, um, obviously, after I caught up with my family and that, um, I'd say probably the beach is one thing that um, I want us to go to pretty quickly. Yeah. Do you have a, a favorite lunch spot that you have to go to? Some do you ask your family like, "Hey, I need to, I need this at home right away." 
Um, just the home cooked meals by mom. Obviously, I haven't had those in a while, so it's been nice to catch up on uh, yeah, all the home cooked meals for sure. When you kind of went through your recruitment, was that did you always picture yourself going to a school in the United States? Was that always something that you imagined? Yeah, um, ever since I kind of took basketball more seriously um, and saw that it was kind of a pathway for me to to further my education as well as um, gain exposure, I think that college definitely was a, a realistic option. Um, and then, yeah, throughout the recruitment, I, I guess it became obviously a serious option. And, um, yeah, just really grateful I found myself at UVA. What was it about UVA that you decided that, that was the right fit? Because obviously you your recruitment happened during the pandemic. So it was even more convoluted than everything because you, you obviously couldn't visit, although you were so far away. You couldn't take an official visit. You couldn't do any like, anything like that. It was so different, the world, during your recruitment. How did you manage to think UVA is the right fit for me? Yeah. Um, obviously, there were so many different aspects that um, come down to when you're choosing a school, but yeah, just myself, my family, we fit, we felt like um, Virginia was the right fit for me. Um, obviously, it takes the education and, and the basketball piece. Um, both my teachers, are, uh, both my parents are teachers. So um, education is something that we value in our family. And um, yeah, just really like the relationship that I'd formed with Coach Bennett and the staff and um, just heard nothing but great things about the school. Yeah. How did you see your first year? What were some of the biggest challenges you think you faced? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, just off the court, you know, living in a new country for the first time, living away from home. Um, that was obviously a challenge in itself and being able to adapt to, um, yeah, you know, not having your parents around and not having that support, I guess, around. Um, and then, yeah, obviously on the court, there were so many differences um, between the way that you know, the games played in America and compared to around the world. So I'd say there were a lot of different challenges, uh, but those would probably be the, the two biggest. What was the thing that shocked you the most about when you moved to the United States? Was there something that you weren't expecting? Uh, was it the homesickness? What was something that you weren't really expecting as a challenge or something that it kind of blew you away? Yeah, I think that um, obviously New Zealand's quite a small country in comparison to America. So yeah, just, just the size and um, the population and the cities and everything within America was, um, yeah, pretty mind-blowing for me to deal with this year um, and so exciting and cool at the same time. I remember interviewing Jack Stolt one year, um, and he told me one thing when he came stateside was the size of the meal. He was talking nice. about uh, Chipotle. That was, his, that was his thing. He loved Chipotle. Was that kind of, did you have sort of something like that where you didn't expect something like that? It was like, wow, this is different than my, than my home. Yeah. Um, I remember vividly going to Smoothie King and um, kind of a large hair is like probably like yay big and um, just like a good portion here in New Zealand. And I didn't really know what the ounces were. And I kind of just asked for the biggest one. And I remember getting it and just being like, this is crazy. Um, <laughs> this is way more than I need. So definitely get the small uh, uh, Smoothie King now, which is probably equivalent of like a medium or large here in New Zealand. You know, you, you joke, but I also, I grew up in Europe for a lot of my childhood and middle school and high school. And I always still confused with ounces because I'm used mm -hmm. to, you know, liters and um, even though centimeters and, and, you know, even kilometers. So when you're here, do you also feel like, uh, I always convert it in my head, even like Celsius and Fahrenheit. Do you feel like you're doing the same? Yeah, for sure. Um, it was definitely challenging taking a physics class and some of the um, measurements being in feet and different things like that. But yeah, for sure. Um, definitely getting better though, when people are kind of saying it's 85 degrees or whatever that kind of is, I kind of got a bit of indication now than I did at the start of the year, that's for sure. I will say 60 degrees is always strange to me. That's the hardest temperature for me to understand from Fahrenheit to Celsius. How about you? Yeah, I find that hard too. Yeah. So when you think of this upcoming season, uh, UVA basketball returns a lot of experience. Obviously, K.A. Clark is coming back. You have Jaden Gardner coming back. Armand Franklin coming back. How great is it to have that experience coming back in the court? Yeah, it's great for sure. I think that... Um, definitely something that's really unique when you look at um, other teams that we'll be facing with 
players that will be leaving or I guess with this whole transfer portal, it's um, allowed for a lot of like fluctuation between teams. But to have such a big group of core guys returning is um, something that I think is going to really help us and be a, a big strength of ours this year. You, you touched on a little bit, you know, uh, this being so far away from home. Who did you kind of lean on out of this team uh, during your first couple of months? Yeah, um, I'd say within the team, obviously, there's there's a lot of support that we have um, from the staff and the players as well. But, yeah, I'd say that the international guys, um, you know, Igor Milicic, who's um, actually transferred away from UVA, sadly, and Francesco Cafaro and Cody Statman, obviously, all four of us were um, international student athletes. So I think that we were going through similar um, experiences or they'd been through experiences that we were going through. So just leaning on those guys was great. How much do you feel like you've personally grown? Um, yeah, for sure. I feel like I've personally grown. Um, I think that, yeah, in so many areas, obviously, you know, off the court and on the court, um, just, you know, meeting the expectation that's kind of set for us um, in the classroom and in and, and life as well as also um, on the court. So, yeah, for sure, definitely think I've personally grown. Do you feel like this team is, because a lot of experience coming back, that means a lot of you know each other very well on the personal level as well as on the court. Do you feel like when you get back, it's just you guys have this chemistry to be built in from, you know, last season? Yeah. Um, I was actually talking to someone the other day just about how, you know, all the experiences that we've been through this year, how we're able to bring those into next season with so many guys being um, here. Obviously, we have new people coming in and um, obviously a transfer too, but I think that those guys are going to fit in great. And yeah, we have a great chemistry and great culture going on. So I don't think that um, that'll be a problem at all. You had a huge game, I believe, against Iowa in the fall. What was about that game that kind of lights came on? How did that feel? Yeah, um, it felt great. Obviously, I think that all first years go through highs and lows. And, um, you know, everyone wants to play right away. And kind of, um, I was kind of found on the other end of that and not playing, but yeah, I was just really um, grateful that I made the most of the opportunity that I had. And yeah, it just feels great to try and try and help the team win. Obviously, we came up short in that game. But um, yeah, it was just a, a game that I remember. And, you know, I want to really try and build on that um, moving forward. Where, Which area of your game have you seen the most growth? Yeah, um, I think I'd be kidding if I didn't um, say defense. You know, it's obviously emphasized so much at UVA and under um, Coach Bennett's system. So I think obviously I have so much area to grow, um, but yeah, just feeling a lot more solid on the defensive end and just adjusting to the size and speed and athleticism that um, kind of we face within the ACC. You'll be heading to Italy for that two week trip. How excited are you for that trip? Yeah, we're all so excited. Um, everyone's kind of just fizzing and I know lots of the boys um, haven't even left the United States before, so everyone's really excited and Obviously, we're going to have um, games while we're away as well. And um, yeah, I think it'll just be awesome bonding time for all of us. Have you made a list of places you want to see? Um, no, I haven't personally made a list of places um, that I want to see, but we did kind of get a sneak peek at the itinerary. And um, yeah, there were so many amazing places that it looked like we were going to be able to, um, yeah, fortunate enough to go visit and see. So yeah, definitely excited for all those experiences coming up. Where are you headed? Where are some of the areas that I said in the itinerary? Um, I believe Rome, um, Florence, and there are a few other places, but I, I can't actually remember the names of the city. Is Italian food one of your favorite things to eat? That's a big question. Yes, I love pasta. Um, I love cabanara. is probably my favorite um, pasta dish. And yeah, definitely excited for the food. That's for sure. Well, as an Italian, I have to tell you, you have to have, if you're in Southern Italy, you have to try a real cannoli, not the ones you find in the state side. <laughs> yep. Um, how's your Italian? Not good. I couldn't tell you anything in Italian. <laughs> well, you got to practice your hand gestures. Like my, my husband tells me, it's like air traffic controller when I talk. So you got you to gotta, right. you gotta work on your hand gestures when you're out there. Okay. Yep. <laughs> You also got to say a few words like chow. That's one of the simplest things. That's, that's higher by is chow. Chow. So, see, there you go. You already speak Italian. Yep. <laughs> um, so when you're not playing basketball, what do you do uh, to kind of unwind? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Obviously, um, our schedules within the season are pretty basketball heavy. And um, if we're not kind of doing basketball, we're in class or kind of got homework. But yeah, for me, I just enjoy um, spending time with those who mean a lot to me, if that being talking to family or um, hanging out with friends. Yeah, just anything, I guess, to kind of take your mind off um, the game and kind of the pressures that we have on us. Yeah. Is there an area in Charlottesville that kind of the place you go to unwind? Um, I wouldn't say there's like a specific area as such. Um, obviously, I've really enjoyed everything that um, Charlottesville has to offer. Um, yeah, I think that if it's kind of hanging out around a pool in the summer or um, kind of going for a walk or snowball fight maybe every now and then um, in the snow, but yeah. Well, Tane, I really appreciate you talking with us. Um, you said you'd like pasta. So when you're in Rome, better check out uh, Cacho e Pepe. That's one of the, your pasta dishes. Um, okay. It's kind of like spaghetti, but it's a little thicker. I think you would enjoy it. So I hope you enjoy your time in Italy. Thank you. That sounds good. <laughs> and thanks again for Tane for taking a few minutes and talking with us. When we taped it last week, he was you know, in the middle of spending time with his family, he was preparing to get back to Charlottesville at the end of the week. So I really appreciate his time with us when, you know, he wanted to spend more time with his family before returning to Charlottesville. And if you want to know more about Virginia men's basketball trip to Italy, well, Tane Murray is going to have you covered because guess what? He's going to be vlogging from Italy. And the way to watch those vlogs is by subscribing to the Cap Club. If you follow everything that's been going around NIL, you understand that Cap Club is this new venture by Cavalier Futures, which is a subscription program where you pay a subscription to get to know your athletes a little bit better. And a lot of the proceeds go to the players themselves. So just head up to Cav Club and you'll see Tane Murray vlogging for them while they're in Italy. So thanks again for Tane for joining us. And thank you guys for watching and listening to our show. Make sure to subscribe to us wherever you listen to your podcast. And go ahead and leave us a review and rate us on Apple and Spotify. So again, for Tane Murray, I'm Jackie Franchuli, and I hope you guys have a good rest to your week.